Take a breath, step outside. Good evening, everyone. Yat e anoftro. Thank you for being with us this evening. Indigenous Ways is very honored always on Wednesday evenings to share our wisdom circle with everyone that's beaming in on social media and on Zoom. We'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of our country we call Turtle Island, also known as the United States of America. We like to pay respect to our elders, and we want to take this moment to acknowledge traditional owners and ancestors of these lands. We reside here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. All around us is Pueblos. Wherever you're beaming in from, we'd like to acknowledge your traditional owners and ancestors of the lands you are at so we could all be here. We would not be here without our ancestors. So Indigenous Ways is dedicated to bringing cultures together bridging cultures so that we can decolonize and work together and help each other and learn from each other on a global level. And thanks to the internet and the Zoom platform and other social media, we are able to beam in with our Australian brothers and sisters, New Zealand brothers and sisters, East Coasters, West Coasters, Navajo Nation, Pueblo lands, so for that, we are grateful to utilize this tool to communicate with. And this evening, we are so honored, very honored to have our sacred elder from Black Mountain join us this evening. I'd like to start with uh, introducing you to Jane Ballou from Black Mountain. Yat et Jane, for joining us this evening. Uh, we can't hear you, Lynn Dean. Something's wrong. Okay. Now? Uh-uh. Can't hear you, then. Can you unmute it at the bottom, Lynn Dean, at the bottom left? I am. There we go. We got it. Okay. okay. All right. Let's start All again. Right. Hey Jane, thank you for being with us. Yat eh. Oh, yat eh shawe. Ashwandia, ha de. She ya Jane. Marie Belu yin she. The sitchin. Was ye pa ka the kids ile to hot ado biji. E ado hoste to sa sa tha. Sana jo jo holie. Ado sanen she, ado sanen she. Shemato, Shijeholon, eh? Shemai, Bessie, will ye, eh? Bessie, do John Rapbridge, what are ye, is Shijeto Shema? Is Shije, eh, yat, a hati, data, nineteen sixty nine, ata, a ke has date. Shemai, yan, nineteen ninety nine, ata, a ke has date. Ado e e what a e e ado she na e to hano legend in shle ado ma e deskizne e e ya dasje tapaha e dasnale na jeni e dasche what a e san shon she de liala oh oh yeah nana lindin she uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Lynn Dean, and I'm going to interpret for my mom. My mom, her name is Jane Marie Ballou. She was born, or she's from Black Mesa, Zitlijini, in the Kitsili area. It lives um, about seven miles west of the chapter of uh, an area named uh, Sliding Rock after my late grandfather, John Rockbridge. And her clans are near water. Her, uh, her 
our first clans are you they usually come from our mother our second clan they come from our father so grandpa's clan was my dish coyote past people and then her third clan Tabaha, edgewater edgewater people and that would be grandma's father's clan and then her last clan it's not Ginny. It's not Ginny. Um, it, has, a, um, it would be um, her last clan. And then she uh, said that um, she's lived here for many years in Black Mesa area. Her parents are deceased. Mr. Rockbridge passed away in 19... 96 in Tuba City. Uh, her mom, Bessie Rockbridge, she passed in 1990. No, no. She, uh, Grandma passed away at 103, I believe. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you oh, both for being. Fine. Oh, thank you very much oh. for being with us. And can you tell us? Uh, I never get you. What does your clans mean, Isholia? What is the story behind your clans? Baho Zinish. To to benash neta wan zatishna khego. To khano liyegi e e e shi e jo khachinen le ol tate e wal liyegi e shi tale tale hot a ol ta na chukhende. The part she doesn't then had a lot of less than the name day a son than law eight at the yachin ishi a she tore on a cordy a lot of in the zat of her lord la court ho to her lola no a at she what called let or she added to her name is eaten to a ado she ate that it with in chakaya she ate that let to her name lead or let. Not with this cargo, eh, what are a Nick Edo Lisle, Ainlet or Hanenle? What are a bad out to let the little I remember? So, um, her our first clan near water to Hane. This, um, story generates back from when we were first put here by the holy people, and we were just trying to figure out where and who we are so a group of people were walking and then they were thirsty and they send one of the women leaves the group to go find water because they were very thirsty and without not even within hours a short amount of time she uh, came across drinking water water that was good and safe for her people with the group that she was traveling with so that from there that near water was born that woman was told that what that's going to be how we recognize you in the future your clan is going to be near water so that's how that near water clan came about is what mom remembers johnny johnny yeah yeah thank you very much so, uh, Elder Jane, Nikimasana, did you ever live somewhere oh. else besides on Black Mountain? Like, did you ever move off the mountain, or have you just been on the mountain all your life? Well, uh, I went to school in Strande, Old Town, in Strande, Old え、社長さんおっかえ、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、
Elle school, the school pelin, just so be yato ato satasachin. Because she what a hatasatis is she go, but I'll try it up and dadly she, Ella at it at thou, constant dadly. I should a it of do 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 ออกเสียงแล้วเสียงชาติชื่อจันทร์ตาของอาตัวตันติค่ะอิเลโฮวาดันนาฮิค่ะแต่เอ่อคือชื่อที่สกัดหัวใจอ่ะเอ่อคือ
learn the English. And do you use much English at all up there on Black Mountain, or do you just speak in Navajo most of the time? Both. Oh, because you're bilingual. <laughs> Two language. Well, at the time, when I was five years old, I didn't know a thing about the Laguna. Shina uh, was a veteran. He Lasha <laughs> A conscious lanat as a cushy chisachin, who like to eat of Benashinator. What are in his tra? Deep lagana by in tra. The eto that cojain shed or lagana, a shield cheat as a mother of Shaje, to his tra. A hot out a yat cheat. A coado let us in in the dosa spare husband that then. A co e ad ultra the yadashta on that shin the harshit a yat. อ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่าอ่า
Hot <laughs> Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> um, so from her days at Pinyon boarding school, she was finally uh, officially enrolled by her older brother, who was a veteran at the time, and uh, her late father. And so that she doesn't quite remember, but she thinks that they... Uh, um, came with her to school for a couple of days until she was really comfortable and, and her family was comfortable with, with it. So um, I guess they didn't have boarding school, boarding places at the time. So it was back to that little house on the prairie type deal. Um, from home, they would bring their own bedding like sheepskin and um, blankets pillows, whatever they had, they would bring it with them. And then it would be in the same building as they ate and did their schooling. Um, and then when they went home, they took it back. And, and then also some of the food, the families would donate things like flour, or if the family butchered 
a sheep or a cow or whatnot, they would help the school as well. And that's how they, um, they eat. They ate their lunches and dinner, breakfast is sometimes things that were donated from home, whether it was corn or whatever was in the season. Um, so she spent uh, a couple more years in Pinyon there going to school, which she enjoyed. She had cousins on her father's side that were there. So um, I remember her talking about that and one particular cousin that she was really close to. Uh, Grandma Marie Rose, she passed a couple years, but she, my mom always talked so dearly of her. So from there, mom moved on to Fort Wingate out in Pass Gallup. She spent uh, a couple more years there. And I know when I was growing up, we would hear about how um, a doormate or an evening mom would teach them how to iron, how to sew, how to curl hair and uh, introduce the girls to stockings and um, just a little glamour class, I guess you would call it. And at the time they didn't have uh, grade schools like elementary school, junior high, high school. So they had these um, five-year programs and there was multiple programs that they um, would place the Indian students in. And my mom so happened to be uh, a part of a five-year program that she went to in Albuquerque Indian School. She spent uh, a couple years there and then one, and, and during the summer, I guess she was comfortable enough that she would stay sometimes during the summer in Albuquerque to work. And they allowed some of the students um, to work from the dorms and, you know, to make some extra money. But one year, uh, uh, her dad and a police officer came to the school and told her, you know, your mom's very ill and we need you to come home. So from there, she went home, she dropped everything left with dad, came home to the res, to Pinyon area, and found out that her mom was in Phoenix. Mom, grandma had surgery and had been there for a while. And, and she was very worried that her mom wasn't going to live. And, and they had traditional prayers and herb, herbal drinks and stuff. And grandma was well, she came home um, and she was home with her parents for a while and her older, an older sister, um, I guess, convinced her, her mother that, you know, she'd found a suitor for her younger sister. So it was an arranged marriage that um, they gave my mom that she was taken to this man or they had a little a traditional wedding and she was given away to an older man and this older man was actually one of the original coat talkers that they gave her to and she he was much older than she was and they she at first uh, a couple of days later she ran away to Kingman Arizona where she knew some family some young ladies that she went to school with that were working she stayed out there for a month until he found her and he took her home. And she stayed in that relationship, that marriage, um, for three years. From that marriage, I have two older sisters. And um, he, unfortunately, was very abusive. And my mom ended up in the hospital in the winter. Uh, they almost froze, uh, she and my sisters. So they were all hospitalized. And at the time, you know, divorce wasn't something that you heard of. It was frowned upon. And my grandpa actually stepped in and ended the marriage because of, you know, the son-in-law was abusive. So I know my mom used to talk about that. And she also touched a bit on um, this, how sacred marriage is that Back then, a young lady didn't um, have, a, have a choice or there wasn't any dating. 
and it was just arranged marriages. And she says that today um, people will say, that's my friend. Oh, that's just my friend. But evening comes, they're sleeping with their friends. She says, you're not supposed to sleep with your friend or your buddies. That's a totally <laughs> different relationship. <laughs> I know I uh, as I was growing up I used to hear that from my aunties and um they would say it's your friend at that you know I call a bit that that is so you don't get pregnant for your friends and I'll share a bit with your friends <laughs> <laughs> that type of things that um my mom and her sisters would tell us girls but um so so from there um my uh, grandpa ended that marriage and my mom says she spent about two more years and that this time she, uh, my mom had uh, TB right along with, um, so she spent uh, a couple of years in the sanitarium or one year where she met my late dad, um, my late dad. And, and he had already been in the, in that little system for numerous years. And, um, and so she and my dad were married a couple of years. Uh, they tried to conceive and I wasn't, I came into the world a little later after about four years of being married. And uh, my dad will always, always, he would tell me that, but, um, they lived and made a life until up till 1983 when we lost my dad to prostate cancer. From there, um, mom was alone for 10 more years until she met my stepdad, Fred, through an NAC peyote meeting. And my mom has a really strong belief in, in peyote. Um, she's uh, a very it's very sacred to her and that comes from my grandpa and my dad was also the same way so that's just um something that we all hold dear to us and believe in so that's where mom stopped mm, yet. thank you very much and lindine you have uh, an amazing capacity with your memory that was the longest consecutive interpreting i've ever heard in my life and uh, that was great so uh next question i was going to ask you is uh as you talked about tuberculosis i know a lot of navajos had tuberculosis back in the day and i actually met uh, annie wanika back in 1987 she mm. came to iaia and I was going to school with her granddaughter and she told me about the story of tuberculosis and how she went around to the Navajos to explain about Isholia tuberculosis ad nebikecho in the Navajo language. And uh, nowadays we have this thing called COVID-19. Uh, the Navajos say the Kosantra, the big sick. Uh, how has that affected you on Black Mountain? and uh, the people on the mountain. Can you talk about the current situation with coronavirus on the mountain? Oh, the third sister, my oldest sister, A, Ita is a question. Ita the Kosnas ne Sinito. A ye yaho the Nehonas ne, oh, how you the Nana Yisla. What about her neko? Oko is shut a shut a a trap at all not journey. Oko deco is an around as she saw to his tapahatas long. Oko is in the eight at ten hard she is a dal. Ako <laughs> 
Hershey <laughs> と、と、と、と、Birthday that the hot what <laughs> え、しびねな、とんきすべほずだ、あてんはんすねき。おほちんじすたなはの。あほたなはた。とびちんひじだ。といにつらだだつはして。にせえて。てにせえだだですば。あとあとなはんだ。かい。ほたえべしえい
all right. Lindy, Nana. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can get everything, but here we go. So um, my mom starts off to where um, you had asked um, with the TB and the various illnesses that we've had on Navajo and then this new COVID-19. She uh, says she remembers way back her older sister, maybe she's talking about the measles, was very ill, became very ill with the measles and her um, throat was completely sore and um, she had to go to the hospital and um, some traditional healers were used at the time and most of those things the uh, the traditional healers the herbs the herbalists they're no longer here no one took the time to learn those things and then all of a sudden COVID-19 hits and we don't know where to go what to do and in some ways it brought out the weakness in all of us testing us just like um the that our barriers, you know, this from, from the beginning where people rode the horse to the trading posts many miles away. And now we have bashes, um, lows just within a, a few miles from us. So those kind of things she thinks has ruined us. And when COVID hit and we were told to um, stay put, quarantine, don't do gathering, we were so weak that some of our people had, you know, still were doing bingos, still gathering at birthday parties. And from those gatherings, we didn't listen and we ended up losing family members and friends, even young adults that healthy uh, many lives were lost because we didn't listen we were weak we needed to go to bashes we needed to go to town every other day so in in the old teaching we we forgot about our old teachings and how we were told you know to be vigilant to have uh, prayers, to be thankful, find something to be thankful for that makes you stronger as a person. And yet we just, we just let it be. Thank you very much. So um, beautiful stories. Uh, I wanted to ask you also, has uh, Indigenous Ways, our nonprofit, you know, we've been making trips up to Black Mountain uh, do you feel like you have benefited from our beautiful donors that some of them are watching tonight and listening to your story, Jane Ballou? Do you feel like Indigenous Ways has helped the people on Black Mountain with the masks and some of the food and some of the water we've been bringing up to you? Should we continue doing that? And what do you need from us to continue fundraising for? What is needed on the mountain for the children and the elders and everybody in between and lending, you can help us with this too. This is probably the most important question because we're planning our next trip to Black Mountain in June. Oh. 
Sent Heavy equipment had no Thank you very much. I love you very much, Jane Balu. Lindine. Okay, so so uh, my mom is uh, very, very thankful for the donations that come to us in, in Black Mountain. Uh, the variety of things that you have brought. Um, it's uh, everyone needs those things, the mask, the, the medicine, the food, sometimes clothing, the beautiful scarves that will uh, donate it every, every one loved that. And um, 
she says that somehow the all this CARES Act funding came through, but um, Black Mesa, the little community, only received two uh, two shipments, but nothing during the when COVID was really hard hit, when it was really here, we didn't get anything way off into like Winter Rock areas where there's um, highways that go into the chapters. That's where they delivered most of the things and we were sort of forgotten. And she um, expresses that <clears throat> it's, it's, she's very, very, very thankful that one of our own has come back to help us help her people. Uh, you know, one of our own daughters from Black Mesa has come back to help her people and lift the spirits of the people. And, and which is so true because the things that you donate when I pass out those items in the community, you can just see the, the, the excitement on the elders' faces, whether it's the puzzles or the sewing gadgets or maybe a piece of chocolate that was in there. Um, you see that joy on their face. And um, so it, it really has been a blessing that you, you and your nonprofit have provided things to our people. And one of the biggest things that really helps the elders is um, the adult diapers that you give out, the wet ones, because still some of our people, some of our elders are without water. So those wet ones really, really, really come in hand. It's, um, and then, of course, the diapers, you know, how many times do we all use the restroom? Sometimes we don't even count. And then for someone that has to buy diapers and they live on a, 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 a small check at the beginning of the month, usually um, sometimes I save the, those adult diapers and give them out until towards the end of the month when it's really needed. Oh, yeah. So okay. Yeah, that's how I usually do it. But um, yes, we're very, we're very thankful that um, your donations come to us. This, um, how we're coming to you guys live this evening, this uh, beautiful laptop was a gift from Willa. I just love it. <laughs> it's my new toy. Love you, Willa and Jim. Yes. <laughs> Well, everybody's going to beam in now and see this on our website, on our social media sites. Everybody out there, you know that Black Mesa is receiving these gifts you're sending to us in the mail. You're dropping them off and storing them in the garage. The non-perishable foods is very much appreciated. This last time we were able to bring in produce, fruits, and on top of the non-perishables and uh, really fun stuff. The next round, I got a vision for all the elders on Black Mountain. Guess what it is? Ben Black Gay. Black. Ben <laughs> Gay. Ben <laughs> Gay. <laughs> ben Gay. But also, I think we should get those back scratchers. <laughs> oh. I know elders can uh, can't scratch their back. They can just yeah. give them a back scratcher to put next to the fireplace. So I think that'll be a nice gift. So I'll tell our donors, let's get some back scratchers for the next round. So that's how we do it. You tell us what you need. Our donors, they say, what do they want on Black Mountain? You come first. Jane Ballou, we had 25 people here last Wednesday throughout the day, starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. We had all these trucks, a bunch of supplies. And you know what? They went for the elders first. They said, we have to take care of the elders first. Those are those boxes you got, Lynn Dean. So we made uh, 50 boxes, and then we made uh, 20 more, and then another 50. So they were good-sized boxes. So thanks, thanks, yeah. thanks, all you donors out there on social media, our world family. We want to call you family of choice because this is the kind of goodness and the democracy in this country that we really appreciate for our elders on the mountain and all of their generations afterward. Lynn Dean, 
her mom, Lindeen, Lindeen's children, and their children. So there's four generations on this sheep camp. They still have their sheep and ducks and geese and chickens and uh, dogs and cats. I mean, you should go to Lindeen's camp, man. It's just a busy, busy place. Lots of four leggeds running around, all happy up there, as long as they got water and food. We want to thank you all very much, very, very much, Jane Ballou. Thank you, Masana. Thank you. I'm so grateful that you knew my grandmother, Margaret Dalton, my grandfather, and all my elders that are in the spirit world. And thank you. And my Aunt Emma is here tonight. Yeah. Thanks for joining us tonight, Emma. Um, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Elena. Yeah. Elder Jane Balu. Thank you so much for blessing us with your beautiful uh, stories. Just before we call everyone to come in, you know, you're not going to believe it, but tomorrow is April. The year is going fast. <laughs> and so what we wanted to do is share with who's coming into the circle in the month of April uh, on the 14th. Uh, so two Wednesdays away from the Piscataway Indian Nation, we have Gabrielle uh, Tayak, who's been really instrumental uh, in Indian world. Uh, she, that, so it's south of Maryland on the East Coast. So looking forward to hearing her wisdoms. Also, we have in the concert series, which is the third Saturday of each month, we've got the beautiful Pete Sands, who is Dene, uh, really phenomenal a singer songwriter musician bluesy country style so that's it going to be three o'clock on that saturday afternoon and then uh the the 21st which happens to be earth day uh we've got the beautiful angelina owillo she is deaf uh, she is born and bred here in Santa Fe, New Mexico, uh, and of uh, Latina background as well. Uh, she will be sharing in the circle. And then the last Wednesday of the month, we have the beautiful Myra uh, Garcia, who is Cherokee and Mana Musky Nation, a uh, really extraordinary dance company, dancer, does amazing stuff throughout Indian country. So we're going to be looking forward to her amazing wisdoms. Uh, and then uh, following that, next Wednesday, which will be the 7th of April, we have the extraordinary Diane Rayner, uh, who is from Oke Awinge and also Taos Pueblos. Uh, she was a filmmaker, director once upon a time, has been the uh, professor at IAIA, which is the Institute of American Indian Arts. Uh, we're going to be looking forward to her amazing walk and wisdoms as she joins us next week. Uh, six o'clock Mountain Standard Time, same channel, same place, same time. So please come into the circle and join us. As you know, all of these are free thanks to our sponsors, the Native American Advice Fund, the uh, New Mexico Arts and West Ham. All of our uh, events are also have ASL interpreters. So I want to give our shout out to the beautiful Zoll and also Chris Esiando, who Woo! have been our interpreters uh, for uh, this wisdom circle. And above me, you'll see our website, indigenousways.org. You can go there now and find out more about these amazing uh, people who will be coming through in April. And also you can look at all our archives. We've got over 85 uh, Native American, Indigenous, Deaf and Hard of Hearing and LGBTQIA2 plus presenters. Below us is all our uh, social media. Uh, so if you're in social media now, please like uh, our page or subscribe. You can also go to our our website get our newsletter which we put out weekly and also 
you know, Elder Jane Ballou was talking about the water, some of the communities in Black Mountain uh, don't have running water. That's our next project that we're looking at. And we're going to be looking forward to talking to, and sharing about that in these circles. And then the last thing, if you want to donate, you're able to donate, you can go to our website, indigenousways.org, donate, or at the top, there's a big bar where it says donate, or we've got PayPal, Venmo, or we can do the snail mail uh, checks to Indigenous Ways. That helps us keep us on the air with what we're doing. Also to going and doing all these relief runs, not only to Black Mountain, but we've also been doing the deaf and hard of hearing uh, communities in uh, McKinley County and saying that it's that wonderful time. You know, if you want to, uh, if you're in our Zoom, you want to turn on your, um, your uh, camera and say hello, uh, I'll just let you do that. And then if you're in our social media, Tash, if you can read those while I'm doing this. All right, we've got Hilda Ritchie, who's Zooming in from Wisconsin. Thank you, blessings to all of you. And Michelle Mormel, hi, Palomo Rosales. Oh, and Amber Garland saying, hello, Lindeen. <laughs> Remember Amber, <laughs> Lindeen? Oh, yes. And, uh, yeah. Hi, Lindy. And then jo Jody Aranda saying thank you, Jane, for telling us about your life. And, and is, Jody, too, is beaming in from Australia. Jody, Jody is coming in from Australia. So you have an Australian uh, person here with you tonight, Jane. My beautiful Aunt Emma Dixon. This is Margaret Dalton's daughter that learned everything from grandma margaret so emma knows how to weave and butcher and herd and darn and shear and um you're, you're on you're on mute auntie can you unmute oh thank you so much for uh you people that donate and bless us with all these things needed for the essentials needed to prevent COVID-19 and food to help uh, the people up there. You're very generous and I pray that you will be blessed back. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. We're going to talk Emma into being one of our presenters soon. So let's get her to retire first. Yat eh, Cristina Bueno. Yat eh, do you want to say something? Hi, yes, absolutely. I just wanted to thank you so much for sharing your story. I love hearing elders give their stories and telling about their lives. Really, I agree with Tosh. I think it's so important and amazing to remember these languages to preserve these languages and you know be able to share that knowledge and pass it on I think just I think it's beautiful and you know having your daughter there to translate that too it's just I just enjoyed it so much and I want to say thank you for that uh, yeah Christina Christina Bueno we we love you Christina Christina zooming in from New York City Jane New York City, she's from the Mexican Indians from Mexico, New York City. And I want to say uh, all of you that have come in on Zoom and social media live and those that will be watching uh, the recording in the future. Thank you, Paloma, Hilda, Michelle, all of you. And uh, Missy and Pecos, thank you for joining us. Uh, we want to thank our ASL interpreters for making the access available, raising the bar for the indigenous people in the hard of hearing communities. Uh, it's re really making a statement. Join us next week for Diane Reyna from Taos Pueblo and OK Winge. She used to be my teacher at IAIA back in my younger years. And uh, let's lastly give it up for our beautiful Masane, great, great grandmother, grandmother, child of the earth, Father Sky, Jane Ballou, and her daughter, Lynn Dean, our CHR 
personal representative from Black Mountain. Thank you, Lindine and Jane Ballou. We love you. We'll be back. We'll come back in June. Touch the earth.